Welcome to Stellar Insights. Today, uh, we're going to be taking a deep dive into something that I find just absolutely fascinating. And that is how the Apollo Lunar Module, or LM, was designed to overcome all the incredible challenges of the moon's environment. Uh, you know, we're talking about extreme temperatures, radiation, mm. dust, even the vacuum of space itself. You know, it's really a story of amazing engineering challenges and ingenious solutions. And it's really what allowed humans to land on and explore another world. It is really remarkable when you think about it. The moon, our celestial neighbor, mm -hmm. presents a landscape that is utterly alien to our experience on Earth and the Apollo Lunar Module, which is designed to operate in this very unforgiving environment. It's really a testament to human ingenuity and our relentless pursuit of exploration. Every single element of the LM, from its thermal control systems to its dust mitigation strategies, was meticulously engineered to ensure the safety of the astronauts and the success of the mission. So let's start with uh, the extreme temperatures on the lunar surface. The moon experiences these wild swings, from a bone-chilling negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade to a scorching 260 degrees Fahrenheit in direct sunlight. I can't even imagine trying to design a spacecraft to handle that kind of temperature range. The engineers responsible for the LM's thermal control system really had to come up with creative solutions, um, employing a multifaceted approach to regulate the internal temperature. So the exterior of the LM was coated with these reflective materials to try to minimize that heat absorption from the sun. Uh, for example, the windows. They had multiple layers of specialized coatings that were designed to reduce the transmission of infrared and ultraviolet light. And these coatings were really crucial in preventing excessive heat buildup inside the module. So I've read that the LM was also wrapped in these uh, multi-layer insulation blankets, almost like a high-tech space blanket. What were those made of and how effective were they? Those blankets were incredibly important for maintaining a stable temperature inside the LM. They were composed of materials like mylar and H-film, stacked in layers, up to 25 layers thick. But what's really fascinating is that these materials weren't particularly exotic or revolutionary for the time. The real ingenuity lay in adapting these common materials for such a critical purpose, creating a highly effective thermal barrier that was capable of withstanding that extreme lunar environment. It's amazing how they were able to use these relatively simple materials to solve such a complex problem. But thermal control wasn't the only challenge they had to deal with, right? The, the astronauts were also exposed to dangerous levels of radiation on the lunar surface. That's right. Unlike Earth, the moon has no magnetic field or atmosphere to shield it from the constant bombardment of radiation from the sun. This radiation, a mix of high energy particles, really posed a significant threat to the health of the astronauts. Prolonged exposure could lead to various health issues, including radiation sickness, an increased risk of cancer and damage to vital organs. So protecting the crew from this invisible danger was paramount. So how did they mitigate the risk of radiation exposure during the Apollo missions? Was the LM structure enough to provide sufficient shielding? While the LM's aluminum structure offered some inherent shielding, it wasn't enough to fully protect the astronauts from the intense radiation environment of space. So to address this, the engineers incorporated several measures. Each astronaut wore personal decimeters to monitor their radiation exposure throughout the mission. This allowed them to track their cumulative dose and ensure it remained within safe limits. Additionally, mission planners carefully timed the lunar excursions to coincide with periods of low solar activity, further minimizing the astronauts' exposure to harmful radiation. That makes sense. But what about the LM's electronics? I imagine those would be particularly susceptible to radiation damage. You're absolutely right. Radiation can wreak havoc on sensitive electronic components, leading to malfunctions and potentially jeopardizing the entire mission. To address this, the engineers use what are called radiation-hardened electronics in the LM. These specialized components were designed to withstand the damaging effects of radiation, ensuring the reliability of the spacecraft's critical systems. It's a testament to the foresight of the Apollo engineers that they anticipated and addressed these challenges, paving the way for the success of these groundbreaking missions. Now let's talk about something that might seem a bit less daunting than radiation or extreme temperatures, but proved to be a persistent challenge for the Apollo astronauts. Lunar dust. It's hard to imagine that something as seemingly innocuous as dust could pose such a serious threat. Lunar dust is unlike anything we experience on Earth. It's incredibly fine, almost like powdered glass, and incredibly abrasive. Because the moon has no atmosphere or wind to erode it, the dust particles remain sharp and jagged. This posed several challenges for the Apollo missions. The abrasive nature of the dust meant it could easily scratch and damage equipment including visors, camera lenses, and even the astronauts' spacesuits. So how did they deal with this 
ubiquitous and pesky dust. It must have been a nightmare trying to keep it out of everything. The engineers came up with a number of clever solutions to mitigate the dust problem. To protect sensitive equipment, they used sealed bearings and protective covers to prevent dust from infiltrating delicate mechanisms. Uh, special coatings were applied to visors and camera lenses to make them more resistant to scratching. But perhaps the most surprising solution was the use of brushes and even small specialized vacuum cleaners to remove dust from the astronauts' spacesuits after each lunar excursion. A lunar vacuum cleaner. That's brilliant, but I imagine it was a constant battle, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Despite their best efforts, lunar dust remained a persistent challenge throughout the Apollo missions. It got into everything, clinging to surfaces and infiltrating even the smallest crevices. The astronauts often complained about the dust's abrasive nature and how it permeated their suits and equipment. It even had a distinct metallic smell, which some astronauts likened to gunpowder. This experience highlighted the importance of dust mitigation strategies for future lunar missions and the need for innovative solutions to address this unique environmental challenge. Now let's shift our focus to a challenge unique to space exploration, operating in a vacuum. The absence of air must have presented numerous engineering hurdles for the designers of the lunar module. You're right. The vacuum of space is an environment unlike anything we experience on Earth. It's a realm devoid of air. And this absence has profound implications for the design and operation of spacecraft. Everything on the LM, from the life support systems that provided oxygen for the astronauts, to the propulsion systems that allowed it to maneuver in space, had to be designed to function flawlessly in this airless environment. Conventional systems that rely on air pressure or combustion simply wouldn't work. I imagine the lack of air resistance also had a significant impact on the LM's overall design, right? Absolutely. On Earth, vehicles like airplanes and cars are shaped to minimize air resistance and achieve aerodynamic efficiency. But in the vacuum of space, there's no air to resist motion. This means the LM didn't need to be aerodynamic, leading to its distinctive, somewhat ungainly spider-like appearance. It was all about functionality over form, a design philosophy driven by the unique demands of operating in space. The absence of air also had implications for the thermal control systems. Without air to transfer heat, the LM had to rely on radiation and conduction to regulate its internal temperature, adding another layer of complexity to its design. So the vacuum of space, in many ways, dictated the very form and function of the lunar module. Mm. It's a reminder that when we venture beyond Earth, we have to adapt our engineering principles and design philosophy to suit the alien environments we encounter. Precisely. The LM's design was a testament to the adaptability and ingenuity of the engineers who created it. They had to think outside the box challenge conventional assumptions and develop novel solutions to overcome the unique challenges posed by the vacuum of space. It's a lesson that continues to inform spacecraft design today as we push the boundaries of exploration further into the cosmos. Finally, let's talk about the moon's gravity, or rather the lack of it. The moon's gravitational pull is only about one sixth that of Earth's. While this must have made liftoff easier, I imagine it also posed challenges for landing and maneuvering on the lunar surface. You're absolutely right. The lower gravity of the moon, while offering some advantages, presented its own set of challenges. Landing on the lunar surface was a delicate operation. The engineers had to carefully calculate the descent rate and thrust to avoid damaging the LM. Or worse, tipping it over. Too much thrust and the LM could bounce back into space. Too little and it could crash land. The astronauts had to rely on their skills and the precision of the LM systems to execute a safe and controlled landing. And once they were on the surface, moving around must have felt very different compared to Earth. It must have. The lower gravity meant that every step they took had the potential to send them bouncing much higher than on Earth. Maintaining balance and controlling their movements required careful planning and a constant awareness of their surroundings. You know, imagine trying to walk or run on the moon. It'd be a very surreal and challenging experience. So how did the engineers design the lunar module to handle these unique low-gravity conditions? The LM's landing system. It was a marvel of engineering, specifically designed to accommodate the moon's lower gravity and the uneven terrain. Uh, it featured four sturdy legs with shock-absorbing struts that could handle the impact of landing and distribute the weight of the module evenly. And at the base of each leg, were large foot pads, which were designed to provide stability on that soft, powdery lunar surface. Looking at those iconic images of the LM standing on the moon, it's incredible to think about all the ingenuity that went into designing and building a spacecraft yeah. that was capable of landing and operating in such an alien environment. Yeah, it's a testament to the brilliance and dedication of the engineers, scientists, and technicians who worked tirelessly to make the Apollo missions a success. 
You know, the LM wasn't just a spacecraft. It was a symbol of human ambition, our technological prowess, and our unyielding desire to explore the unknown. It really pushed the boundaries of what was considered possible at the time and inspired generations to dream of venturing beyond Earth. And it's not just about the Apollo missions. The solutions that were developed for the lunar module served as invaluable lessons for subsequent space missions. And they continue to inform our current plans for future lunar and even Mars exploration. Absolutely. The challenges that were faced by the Apollo engineers, from extreme temperatures and radiation to that pervasive lunar dust and the vacuum of space, they're all still relevant today. The lessons that were learned from the ILM's design and operation have had a profound impact on the development of spacecraft, habitats, and even the tools and techniques that are used for exploring other celestial bodies. The legacy of the LM extends far beyond those initial moon landings. So in a sense, the LM was a stepping stone to the future of space exploration, paving the way for our continued exploration of the cosmos. Precisely. The Apollo program and the lunar module in particular forced us to confront the challenges of operating in an extraterrestrial environment. And the solutions that were developed during that era have really become cornerstones of modern space exploration. Guiding our efforts as we venture further into the cosmos, the spirit of innovation and problem solving that characterized the Apollo era continues to inspire us as we set our sights on new horizons. It's a powerful reminder that exploration drives innovation, and those innovations can have a far-reaching impact, shaping the future of space exploration and beyond. It really makes you wonder what innovative solutions we'll come up with next as we venture further into space. You know, it's a thought that fills me with a sense of awe and anticipation. It's truly remarkable how every aspect of the lunar module was so meticulously designed to overcome the moon's very unique and harsh environment. Uh, as we conclude our deep dive into the Apollo lunar module and its remarkable journey to the moon, it leaves us with a sense of wonder and a profound appreciation for the ingenuity of those who made it possible. It does indeed. It also prompts us to ponder the challenges and the possibilities that lie ahead as we continue to explore the vast expanse of space. And as we push the boundaries of human knowledge and endeavor. Absolutely, yeah. Ever wondered what makes rockets powerful enough to break Earth's grip? From the Saturn V to SpaceX, rockets are the key to humanity's future among the stars. Discover the evolution of these giants, their environmental impact, and how they're paving the way for a sustainable, multi-planetary future. Watch the full episode of Stellar Insights on YouTube.